I made a mouse. Well, I took a mouse you could buy, stripped it for parts, and then built up a frame around the outside to perfectly fit my hand. And you won't believe just how much lighter it is than the original. Hang on, no, that's, nah, hang on. G'day, I'm Cam, and this project was tough. Mainly because of the two rules that I set for myself that almost made me quit it. I now remember why I gave up on this thing three months ago. But after many prototypes, I finally found the perfect fit to become a pro gamer. Dude, I'm gonna kill you. Yeah. Before we can start the five stages of making a mouse, we need to begin with shucking the original. I bought a Razer Basilic X Hyperspeed. I've used one of these daily for over a year. It has Bluetooth, a low latency dongle for gaming, but most importantly, often drops to around $44 on Amazon, making it an incredibly good value buy. How good is this? <laughs> this is really cool because we can now see how the mouse works. So on one side of the scroll wheel, we have a rotary encoder to detect scrolling, but on the other side, it rests on top of a button for middle mouse click. Behind that, we have the DPI button for changing our movement sensitivity, and then on the left side, our side buttons. And up front, left and right click. My goal is to create a lighter weight mouse than the original. To do this, I plan to put material only where I need it for my grip style. I thought about a side hinge, left and right click, but ultimately went to a traditional hinge from the rear. It took about half an hour to shape it and kind of find a spot for all my fingers to rest comfortably. The most important part for me was to have a ledge for my thumb because I don't like it dragging on the side on a mouse mat. I think it's time to move into 3D modeling. Do you like making things? Well, you're luck because today's sponsor PCBWay are holding their sixth project design contest and your electronics project or mechanical design could win you some sweet prizes. What's this? A Raspberry Pi Pico just for participating? That's insane. Entries are open now until the 15th of January, 2024. Click the link in the description below to enter. Good luck. Imagine winning 1500 bucks cash. That's wild. Now my first rule is to only use free software. I chose Stickycad for its simple, non-destructive modeling. You have shapes, you have holes, and when you group them together, the hole cuts out of the shape. You can then turn that into a hole, group that with another shape, and then repeat. And so we're gonna make this mouse from rectangular, triangular, and circular prisms. Yeah. The purpose of standoffs is to let us screw down and secure the mouse's PCB to the 3D printed part. So I just finished modeling a basic prototype for the base to ensure the standoffs and dimensions are correct. And when I get that back from the 3D printer in 15 minutes, I can then scale everything from it. Mmm, I added too much tolerance in here. In the bottom right are about like half a mil off. To keep the scroll wheel in place, the original base has a U-shaped brace. And this was a simple shape to reproduce. Oh, perfectly braces it. At this point, you might be thinking, Cam, why are you doing this? That would be a good question. I watched a great video by Ali. His channel's Optimum Tech, and he 3D printed a custom mouse with minimal material, making it insanely lightweight. After I watched his video, I straight away ordered the mouse for this project, but I knew there would be some big changes because he removed his scroll wheel and didn't have side buttons, which to me were essentials that I needed on my mouse. But I didn't realize this would cause so many issues. Now you may have noticed that Ali's design has the trigger suspended from the front. So it allows his PCB just to slide on in and then be screwed down. Unfortunately, my mouse's PCB has a cross section in front of the scroll wheel. So I can't push it in under main button triggers and push it down over the scroll wheel support. I re-evaluated my design and come up with a cap that could go over the middle mouse button. Removing the need for the fork style brace, however, that didn't work because I realized that my finger will have to curve around the side buttons to fingertip press a low profile mount front left click. Far out, oh, I just wasted so much time. And if I extend the height to where it won't be an issue, you can just see it would be incredibly unstable. There's no right or wrong answer, it's just experimental. I like knowing exactly what I want to do. And so I opted for a two-piece sandwich design where the top piece screws into the side buttons standoff. You hearing this? That works freakishly well. Okay, so I've come up with an idea and I'm pretty stoked. Uh, this top piece can push down and mount over this DPI switch. That could give it like a centered pivot point. The center piece on the top part really just slots in well, which is great. Today I want to figure out these side buttons. Oh, that needs to, that needs improvement. <laughs> I thought there would have to be some type of like hinging mechanism, but that makes sense. So it's connecting from the base instead and pivoting to the top. 
Oh, that's so clicky. That's a big leap forwards. The side buttons were surprisingly easy in comparison to the battery mount. And that's because the second rule is I must keep original pieces as is. So the project can be easily replicated and the original mouse can be put back together. But parts here, battery wire, we be going down from a like double A to a triple A. I didn't know a triple A was like 10 mil. 44.2 is the feeler gauge. Go down and touch the PCB. Imagine gaming, you the battery just like pops out and hits you in the face. Huge amount of strain. Can I just like, whoa. <laughs> This is too wide, going like that. But what if I just put the battery holder vertical? Take up a lot less width. How do we stop it from falling out? I now remember why I gave up on this thing three months ago. <laughs> I've cracked the cookie. Is that even a saying? You can see this little like support to clamp this bit of metal. It stops it from popping out the back way. I'll just add a little one that comes up the right hand side here to stop it from going left to right. We'll bridge across the top. Slide the PCB in underneath. I guess now it's time to model the changes. Oh, that's in. And then this can just push in from the side. Teeny wire. But I can shake it by the battery. The battery won't pop out. Let's check the Raspberry Pi. Add a device. Hey, it's here. Oh, <laughs> it works. Why does this feel like a custom car build or something? Standard mouse is 112 grams. My current prototype, 51. Hang on, no, that's, nah, hang on. It's over half the weight. I was starting to think like, was this even worth it? Like, is there gonna be a big difference? Dude, I'm gonna kill yet. You know what? I would love a little skid pad. Gee, that's loud. Skid pad for my pinky finger. I'm gonna add that to my list. Is it weird that I feel bad using the like, prototype to model the next version of itself. And the original mouse, my fingers are out there. So if I lift this up, put it straight down, it's getting a bit of a cramp for those fingers because I'm bringing them in to this. Look, another 10 mil would be comfortable. I'm pretty sure that this is exactly 10 mil wide. It is. Since this has been extended by 10 mil, I can now put it on the side. Stretch in the full length. That is taut. Like you could you could strum a good old tune on that one. We get a battery in here. Whoa! Oh my goodness! That feels incredible. Oh, that is feeling that is feeling fresh. <laughs> what? That little skid pad for the pinky. <laughs> I've been modeling for like three hours straight, just having fun. No, oh, it's just. Probably waiting for me to go to bed. I have added a lot more material, but this thing goes hard. I'm excited to show you. Ooh, buddy, look at this. All right, the batteries moved to the right hand side and I slightly thickened the pinky pad. The main buttons now slope downwards towards the front and the side buttons and thumb rests have also been extended, resulting in a one of a kind mouse that's shaped for my grip. After various prototypes, I surprisingly preferred the flat over the sloped side, which resulted in the very angular look. I might say I should name the mouse, and I reckon the sides look like wings. So I'm thinking like glider, maybe bat, or, or beano bat? I don't know, let me know in the comments below a name that matches this design. Having less mass to shift around results in a more responsive feeling mouse. The micro movements of my muscles are more easily translated to on screen, and that's with repurposing the original glide pads. Compared to the original, my mouse comes in 53 grams lighter, giving it a total weight of 59 grams. Compare that to a $300 lightweight pro mouse, it's technically lighter. I want to experiment with some further weight reduction without sacrificing strength, but at the end of the day, it's much lighter than before, and I reckon it looks sick. If you liked today's video, thumbs it. If you loved it, then sub it so you don't miss out on my upcoming tech projects like a custom keyboard build. Go to Vegas, which is ready to go. Ali's video is up here, the one that inspired this project, and my other tech projects are down there. Thank you for watching. Bye.